The hour of noon having arrived, on this day, Monday, December 14th, 2020, I convene this assembly of Minnesota's presidential electors and alternate electors. Members of the Electoral College, welcome. Please stand, if you are able, to recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Members of the Electoral College, welcome, and thanks for your service. You are not only here today as a witness to history, you're here as part of history, because today you are literally making history. What you do today will survive you for as long as the United States of America exists. We're gathered here today in the middle of a once in a century pandemic. The cost has been high. As of today, nearly 300,000 of our fellow Americans, including almost 4,500 of our fellow Minnesotans, have died from COVID-19. We mourn them and we vow to remember them. We also continue the work of democracy by holding free and fair elections just as we have in past pandemics, wars, and other national crises. This afternoon, 49 other states and the District of Columbia are doing exactly what we are doing right here, right now. At this ceremony, Minnesota will officially cast its 10 Electoral College votes for the next president and vice president of the United States. As many of you know, there are 538 electors nationwide. It takes a majority vote of 270 electors to win the presidency. We in Minnesota will cast 10 of those electoral votes today. The US Constitution created the Electoral College, of course, but the Constitution is silent as to how each state chooses to allocate its electoral votes. So states must decide that question for themselves. And Minnesota, long ago, decided to do what 47 other states currently do, which is allocate all of the state's electoral votes to the winner of the statewide popular vote in Minnesota. But that method is a choice. It is not a constitutional command. Not all states use this so-called winner-take-all method. Two states, Maine and Nebraska, allocate electoral votes on the basis of congressional district. This allows states to split their electoral votes amongst different candidates. Some people have suggested that more states move to the Maine and Nebraska model. Others have suggested a move to the national popular vote model by which individual states would agree to award their electoral votes to the overall winner of the national popular vote instead of to the winner of the popular vote in their particular state. And of course, there are those who want to abolish the Electoral College entirely. Whether we as Americans or we as Minnesotans wish to change the way that we select future presidents and vice presidents, that will be an ongoing subject of debate. But our law in Minnesota is clear, and today we honor and follow that law. Of course, today's events will hasten a transition of power in our country. That same kind of transition of power from a duly elected sitting president to a successful challenger has happened nine times in American history before today. That transition of power has always been peaceful, orderly, and accepted by the American people. This year should be no different. There are those in our country who have tried to cast doubt on the outcome of the election, but the votes have been properly cast, counted, and in some cases, recounted. The results have been certified, Courts nationwide have affirmed the outcomes as pr procedurally fair and accurate. This meeting of the Electoral College in Minnesota and in all other U.S. jurisdictions will be the latest verification and validation that democracy worked in America in 2020. 
With that in mind, we should recognize today some of the heroes of this past election the local election officials and poll workers across Minnesota who put in hard work and who faced great obstacles, yet still delivered an election that was fair, honest, and accurate. And the voters of Minnesota who adapted, who leaned in, and who expressed their confidence in our election system by showing up in record numbers leading the nation once again in turnout. So now is the time to celebrate not a specific candidate-based outcome, but a larger and greater outcome, the endurance of American democracy. Even under the most challenging circumstances, we dare not ever take that for granted. President John F. Kennedy said, democracy is never a final achievement. It is a call to an untiring effort. He was right. Democracy is an untiring effort. Its survival, its health require work and focus and patience and understanding. We as a people are up to that task. And you, as members of the Electoral College, will lead us today in fulfilling that task. We honor you, and future generations of Americans will be grateful to you. Members, we will now proceed to the roll call of electors. Before beginning the roll call, let the record show that in accordance with Minnesota Statutes 208.06, the presidential electors appeared in the state capitol yesterday morning, December 13th, and notified the governor that they were ready to fulfill their duties as electors. The electors were then provided with a certificate listing the names of all the electors and the alternates. I will now proceed to the roll call of electors in the order of congressional district. Please respond by saying the word present when your name is called, the word present. Congressional District 1, Mark Lebo. Congressional District 2, Roxanne Mindeman. Present. Congressional District 3, Cheryl Poling. Congressional District 4, Diana Tastad Damer. Congressional District 5, Travis Thompson. Present. Congressional District 6, Melvin Anarud. Congressional District 7, Nancy Larson. Present. Congressional District 8, Joel Heller. Present. State at large, Nashina Hussein. Present. State at large, Muhammad Abdurrahman. Present. The roll call shows that all 10 electors for the state of Minnesota are present. Let the record also show that in accordance with Minnesota Statutes 208.06, the alternate presidential electors appeared in the state capitol yesterday, December 13th, and notified the governor that morning that they were ready to fulfill their duties as alternate electors. The alternate electors were then provided with a certificate listing the names of all the alternate electors. I will now proceed to the roll call of the alternate electors in the order of Congressional District. Once again, please respond by saying the word present and stand if you are able when your name is called. Congressional District 1, Linda Wonderlich. Present. Congressional District 2, Greg Hansen. Present. Congressional District 3, Ben Hackett. Present. Congressional District 4, DeAndre Gordon. Present. Congressional District 5, Alfreda Daniels. Congressional District 6, Zarina Bobber. Present. Congressional District 7, Alan Parrish. Present. Congressional District 8, Helen Klanoff. At large alternate, Renita Fisher. Present. 
at large alternate, Henry Fisher. The roll call shows that eight out of the 10 alternate electors for the state of Minnesota are present. Please be seated. Members, on December 2nd, 2020, Governor Walls signed a document entitled the Certificate of Ascertainment. This certificate sets forth the official and final results of the votes cast for all presidential electors and alternate electors. Three copies of this certificate have been forwarded to the Archivist of the United States and were received by that official before today as required under federal law. Federal law also requires my office to deliver six additional copies of this certificate to you today so that we can attach copies of this document to another certificate that will set forth the results of the presidential and vice presidential ballots that you will cast later today. I have also been advised that these six copies of the certificate of ascertainment are present here in this chamber for your inspection. The certificate of ascertainment lists the official election returns for all presidential candidates who received votes in Minnesota and has particular significance for our work here today. It has a special place in this process in that it reflects the will of all the voters of Minnesota who participated in the presidential election. Mr. David Maeda, Deputy Secretary of State for Elections from the Office of the Minnesota Secretary of State Elections Division, will read these official vote totals before we proceed. Mr. Maeda. The returns of the votes cast for presidential electors at the general election were canvassed and certified by the State Canvassing Board on the 24th day of November 2020 in accordance with the laws of the state of Minnesota and that the candidates receiving the votes for presidential elector and the number of votes cast for each such candidate at the general election is as follows. The electors pledge to Joseph R. Biden and Kamala Harris, Democratic Farmer Labor Party candidates, received 1,717,077 votes. The electors pledged to Donald J. Trump and Michael R. Pence, Republican Party of Minnesota candidates, received 1,484,065 votes. The electors pledged to Roque Rocky Delafuente Fuente and Darcy Richardson, Independence Alliance Party candidates, received 5,611 votes. The electors pledged to Howie Hawkins and Angela Walker, Green Party candidates, received 10,033 votes. The electors pledged to Kanye West and Michelle Tidball, Independent candidates, received 7,940 votes. The electors pledged to Brock Pierce and Carla Ballard, independent candidates, received 5,651 votes. The electors pledged to Gloria LaRiva and Leonard Peltier, Socialism and Liberation Party candidates, received 1,210 votes. The electors pledged to Allison Kennedy and Malcolm Jarrett, Socialist Workers Party candidates received 643 votes. The electors pledged to Joe Jorgensen and Jeremy Spike Cohen, Libertarian Party candidates, received 34,976 votes. In addition, there were 21 declared writing candidates who collectively received 1,242 votes. Having received the most votes cast in Minnesota, the electors and alternate electors pledged to Joseph R. Biden and Kamala Harris have been designated by the Certificate of Ascertainment as presidential electors and alternate electors for the state of Minnesota. Thank you, Mr. Maeda. All electors are present, which constitutes a quorum. Electors, please rise if you are able and remain standing for the administration of your oath. The written oath is on the table in front of each elector. Please raise your right hand 
After I say the word I, please state your name and then continue to repeat after me. I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Minnesota and that I will discharge faithfully my duties as elector for President and Vice President of the United States in and for the State of Minnesota to the best of my judgment and ability. Thank you. Please be seated. Members, the written oath is in front of you for your signatures. Please sign this document now, and staff from the Office of Secretary of State will collect the oath and bring it to Ms. Breams from that office, who will notarize the document. Thank you. As required by state law, your signed oath will be placed on file in the Office of Secretary of State. We will now proceed to the balloting for President and Vice President of the United States. Under the 12th Amendment to the Constitution, a distinct ballot must be taken for President and a distinct ballot taken for Vice President of the United States. In the materials in front of you, you will find one ballot for president and one ballot for vice president. Please complete each ballot by signing your name on the signature line. After completing your ballot, please hold them until I call upon you. If you make a mistake and spoil your ballot, please raise your hand and we will provide a replacement ballot. I will call on you individually to read your vote into the record and staff from the Office of Secretary of State will collect and confirm your vote and will bring your completed ballots to Ms. Black from the Office of Secretary of State.
Okay, we will proceed with the vote. Congressional District 1, Elector Lebo, please read your vote for President of the United States. Joseph R. Biden. And now please read your vote for Vice President of the United States. Kamala Harris. Congressional District 2, Elector Mindeman, please read your vote for President of the United States. Joseph R. Biden. And now please read for the record your vote for Vice President of the United States. Kamala Harris. Congressional District 3, Elector Polling, please read your vote for President of the United States. Joseph R. Biden. And now please read your vote for Vice President of the United States. Kamala Harris. Thank you. Congressional District 4, Elector Tastad Damer, please read your vote for President of the United States. Joseph R. Biden. And now please read your vote for Vice President of the United States. Kamala Harris. Thank you. Congressional District 5, Elector Thompson, please read your vote for President of the United States. Joseph R. Biden. And now please read your vote for Vice President of the United States. Kamala Harris. Thank you. Congressional District 6, Elector Anaru. Please read your vote for President of the United States. Joseph R. Biden. And now please read your vote for Vice President of the United States. Kamala Harris. Thank you. Congressional District 7, Elector Larson. Please read your vote for President of the United States. Joseph R. Biden. And now please read your vote for Vice President of the United States. Kamala Harris. Thank you. Elector Heller, please read for Congressional District 8 your vote for President of the United States. Joseph R. Biden. And now please read your vote for Vice President of the United States. For Vice President Kamala Harris. Thank you. State at large, Elector Hussein, please read your vote for President of the United States. Joseph R. Biden. And now please read your vote for Vice President of the United States. Kamala Harris. Thank you. State at large, Elector Abdurrahman, please read your vote for President of the United States. Joseph R. Biden. And now please read your vote for Vice President of the United States. Kamala Harris. Thank you. Members, the results of the ballots show 10 votes for President for Joseph R. Biden and 10 votes for Vice President for Kamala Harris. Federal law requires that the electors sign six originals of a certificate which sets forth the votes cast by the electors for President and Vice President. I will now ask that these certificates of vote be distributed for your signatures.
Federal law also requires that an original copy of the Certificate of Ascertainment be attached to each copy of the Certificate of Vote. And I will direct that this be done after you have affixed your signatures. We will now proceed to complete the final document required today, the transmittal of the presidential elector vote. Federal law also requires that the electors sign six originals of a certificate transmitting the results of the ballots cast today. I now ask that these documents be distributed for signatures. Please sign the certificate above your name and the staff will collect them after you are finished. These originals are distributed to several offices. One copy is mailed directly to the President of the United States Senate. Two copies are mailed to the Archivist of the United States. Two copies are filed with the Office of the Secretary of State. And one copy is mailed to the Honorable Judge John R. Thunheim, Chief Judge for the Federal District Court for the District of Minnesota.
Members, thanks to everyone for being here and for participating in this 41st assembly of the Electoral College in Minnesota. Our activities today have continued a long tradition of electoral politics. We have conducted today an important constitutional function, but we've also conducted an important cultural function by showing our commitment to the peaceful transition of power. In too much of the world, a change in government comes only through force. We Americans don't do that. We have our differences, often strong ones, but we are committed to the rule of law. Whether we agree or disagree with the outcome that the laws have produced, we respect and honor that outcome nonetheless. Thank you all. May God bless the great state of Minnesota and may God bless the United States of America. If there is no further business to come before this assembly, I would entertain a motion for adjournment sine die. It requires a motion and a second. It has been moved and seconded. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The motion is adopted. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you for your service to Minnesota and to the United States of America. We are adjourned. Thank you.